Hello there. A very good evening to all of you joining us here today. Thank you so much for your presence on this chilly, pouring, traffic jammy afternoon and evening in KL. My name is Isabel Zen. I'm the head of Group Equity Marketing, and I'm also a warrants issuer at Kananga Investment Bank. I'll be handling the session later, but today, we have an exceptionally special guest joining us. Uh, please put your hands together for Amirul Husaini Bin Sharom. He's the Vice President of Infrastructure Development and Management from Bursa, Malaysia. Amirul, how are you doing? Hi, Isabel. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to our friends from Bursa joining us. Yeah, likewise, Isabel. Hey, hello, B Kim. Hello, everybody joining us. Um, as we get started, uh, the usual thing, if you're joining us for the first time, please press one. If you're joining us for the second time, please press two, three, four, five, if you joined us five times. Uh, if it's the first time, of course, press one as well. We really appreciate it. So we know what kind of uh, response we're getting from the crowd and we'll structure accordingly. But for the meantime, I'm going to give Amirul five minutes to share with you the brand new developments at Bursa, Malaysia. Amirul, over to you. All right. Thank you, Isabel, for that warm welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amirul. I will not, you know, waste any more time. I just have five minutes, but I make sure that I fully use this time to introduce you uh, on the new development or platform that Busa just recently launched called My Busa. So I will share my screen. Okay, hope my screen is uh, visible. Looks great, Amirul. Okay, all right. Okay, so tonight I'll be sharing with you on our latest development, a platform that we recently introduced called MyBusa. So just to give you a bit of background, um, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, I hope that you guys are aware currently under Busa Malaysia ecosystem, we have several platforms called uh, Busa Marketplace, Busa Academy, Busa Anywhere. But with MyBusa, we are planning to bring all of these platforms together in, in one place called MyBusa. So MyBusa is essentially uh, a new and personalized platform by Busa Malaysia. And it will be a centralized platform for all of the inv investors to conduct the pre-trade activity all the way to post-trade activity. Okay, so the, the link to, to, to our platform is my.busamalaysia.com. So I will just jump straight into the feature that we have launched recently. So under my Busa right now, we have uh, investment tools such as uh, screener and also heat map. So uh, when we design the, the, the tools, we basically ask the investors out there to give us a feedback. And we always go and check in uh, with our investors to, to you know, to basically develop a, a tool that is, uh, you know, uh, that is useful for, for the investors. So my Busa, um, basically when we design it, it, it was designed by, by the investors uh, uh, and for the investors, right? So we have the investment tools where you can come and explore and check it out. And of course, you can always give us uh, some feedbacks when you explore and play around with uh, the tools. Uh, secondly, we have data and insights. So under data and insight, we are providing a free market data and information. So all of our data is provided by uh, Refinitiv, our market data provider. So you can come and check out and everything is for free. But please note all of our market data and information uh, it is uh, 50 minutes delay. And finally, we have articles and courses. So if you are beginner, intermediate or advanced, uh, you can always come and check out my Busa and we will have something for you and design for you uh, under our articles and courses. So every day you can learn something news, uh, new and under this section. 
so that's what we have uh, currently. Uh, my busa is still new, but what we offer right now uh, it is still not complete yet. There are still upcoming features that we are developing uh, as we speak right now. So coming soon, we have Invest Lab. So Invest Lab is um, a playground for all investors to come and connect with uh, the analysts and uh, the remisers. You can communicate with the analysts and remisers and ask their feedback or, or guidance from them. And apart from that, we are providing a tool where you can always experiment your strategy. So everything uh, in Invest Lab, they are, they are all virtual. So that there are no risks, but the beauty thing is you can always connect and get closer to, to all the analysts and also remisers. Um, secondly, we have consolidated portfolio management. So my Busa, uh, we plan to launch uh, this feature where you can see all your CDS uh, account and portfolio at one place. And not just that, if you have uh, an account like uh, Busa Goldina or BR Capital, you can see all of this account in, in one place. So you don't need to go anywhere. You can just come to my Busa and see all your consolidated portfolio management in one place. And finally, we have the CDS services, a post rate. So this is essentially the features that we launch under Busa anyway, but we bring it to uh, my Busa. So by having all of this, we can complete the whole investor's journey from pre-trade all the way to post-trade. So in one place, you'll be able to enjoy it from, you know, from getting all the learning materials, from using all of our tools, from monitoring your portfolio and also conduct your post-trade activity, uh, CDS services. So finally, I would encourage all of you to come and register for MindBoosa. The registration is so easy. It will take you under one minute to register. So you, what you can do is you can scan the QR code now uh, and, or you can visit www.my.busamalaysia.com. So as simple as that. So once you become a registered member, you'll be able to enjoy the personalized and telemed experience because um, under my busa, uh, everything will be tailor-made and personal for you. So during the onboarding session, we ask you several questions. So based on your answer, we will tailor the dashboard and the content just for you. So uh, that's about it that, uh, that I have for today. So again, I would like to encourage all of you to sign up and register today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amiro. Appreciate your time with us here today. Yeah. Um, as a show of support, you know, we really appreciate all your time here that you spent with us educating the public. And for that, uh, the Naga Warren's team, we would like to offer five uh, Shopee vouchers. We're giving away 50 ringgit each. That was what we did previously. But tonight, just for tonight, we're giving away 10 Shopee vouchers. 10 Shopee vouchers, 50 ringgit each. Uh, all you have to do is when you sign up for my bursa, screenshot it, send it over to our Telegram. We'll send over the link in the Telegram and then we'll just choose at random. So the idea of choosing at random is so you don't have to do it now. All right. Anytime today until tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m. I'll give you 24 hours. Play with it, you know, tinker around, find out more. And then we'll choose those winners by the end of tomorrow and we'll announce the winners on Monday. So please check it out. It's always useful to have new dashboards, new platforms, and especially since it's a new initiative by Bursa where they're consolidating all the Bursa Academy, Bursa Marketplace. What else do you have before our mural? We had a few websites, right? Yeah, we, we have Bursa Anywhere, we have Bursa, Bursa Sustain. Anywhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we had four different websites. So I yes. think it's a fantastic initiative to actually yeah. uh, put them all together. It makes the investing public have a one shot view, you know, at everything instead of having so many links. So fantastic. Right, thank all right. You. Yeah. Okay, super. Thank you so much, Amiral. Stick around. Thank feel you. free for the chat. Sure. Um, we're going to have an advanced session of Warren's today. So here we go. All right. So can I have you guys look to your screens? I'm going to be sharing my screen in a moment. 
the traffic jam in KL was crazy. None of you could tell that my first session just now was from my car, right? <laughs> okay, excellent. Today we're going to be covering these topics. Uh, newbie to advance with Naga Warrants. And as you can see, we started off last week with a newbie session. And we're covering today advance, 22nd August, 8 p.m. So previously, uh, we had these sessions all the time and we post them on YouTube. So if you see on YouTube, we have tons of these videos that we've put up. And these are the ones that won us all of these marvelous awards uh, over the years. But remember, do catch the Mandarin session coming up. And if you guys would like a Malay session, I'll be happy to do that as well. If you want a Malay session, please press M in the chat, please. All right, this is me. You can read my profile later. I need to add uh, a few more awards there. <laughs> and you can tell I like all of these topics. So if you ever reach out to me and you say hello, any of these topics, I'm happy to chat with you about. These are the awards that we've won so far, a bunch of international awards. Uh, Global Banking and Finance, Finance Asia, SRP Pacific Awards, and those videos that I mentioned earlier, they are the ones that got us these international awards for Best Educational Initiative, SRP again, some Marketing um, Loyalty and Engagement Awards, and of course, we are very proud of our Bursa Excellence Awards, where we won Best Structured Warrants Issuer as well. And the main thing, whenever people ask me, I remember I had this question last week, but I didn't have time to pull up the slides because we like to finish on time, right? The main thing about how Penanga's warrants are different from everybody else's warrants, it is due to reliable automated market making. We have cutting edge tools on our websites, like the warrant scanner and the Naga matrix, which is going through another revamp. So stay tuned for that. We try to upgrade all the time, right? Learning is a uh, Kaizen uh, effect. Every day it's 1% extra. And remember during this talk, even if you don't understand me at all, it will be fine. Because if you understand 30% of what I say today, and you rewatch the videos that we have on our investor education videos, and then the next time you watch, it'll be 10% more, 20% more, 30% more. Eventually, you reach 100%. And that's all there really is to learning, isn't it? We're transparent. We've got our Naga Matrix dashboards with our revolutionary traffic lights, which no other issuer has. Very proud of that. Also, because I like to see things really fast. So that's why I came up with that. And you can see it's gray and white. And we have ping for warrants, ping for put warrants, so people don't get confused between uh, call warrants and put warrants just in case some individuals they don't really look at the code i'll cover that later and of course we have localized trading ideas and commentary because of our extremely well-versed and strong and experienced research team and we have all these on-ground marketing channels so we really do try our best to be uh, reliable transparent cutting edge on the ground localized and have strong investor education so these things are the ones that I covered last week. I won't go into it today, but oh wait, so who joined us last week? So I know whether I should be repeating, though I really rather not. If you joined us last week, please press beginner in the chat. Just press B, 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 B in the chat. If you didn't, uh, just press 0, 0, 0, 0 in the chat. So I know how many joined, how many never joined, and therefore you're going to be very confused. If you're pressing 0 in the chat, don't be shy, but I will warn you, it's going to be quite intense tonight because the word is advance. So we'll have those videos up. We already have our beginner video up on YouTube. You can catch that as well, and you can rewatch this video on YouTube over the next few days once we upload it. All right. OK, I want I see a lot of B's, a lot of O's, but because tonight's an advanced session, we just got to go advance, guys. You guys are smart. Kim Hui, 000. I see a bunch of you. Never mind. You guys are smart, right? Malaysians can pick up anything. All right. I covered this last week. Fun concepts to learn. ROI percentages. ROI is more important than your capital. The barbell strategy of how you should be putting only a percentage of your portfolio 
10 to 20 percent of your portfolio, for example, into warrants and not the entire basket. We want the barbell where a chunk of your portfolio is in uh, the larger chunk of your portfolio are in lower risk items and the small chunk of your portfolio is in higher risk, higher rewards, big payoff items such as structured warrants or derivative products. Shear will termination is no substitute for something that actually works. As a trader myself, I know how it feels like to be in your shoes. I was a full-time day trader with a different bank before I actually joined Kananga. So I, I know how it feels like, guys, you know, to be wanting to make money, to be hungry, and not really know what is what. And nobody is really telling you the full story on things. They tell you a bit here, a bit there, and they try to push their products and push their courses, but they don't really tell you what really works. So I hope uh, I can help with that. We offered last week a product comparison, structured warrants versus bonds, ETFs, shares, options, mutual funds, or in Malaysia, we call it unit trusts. We covered the types of warrants, structured warrants versus company warrants, and the differences between the Cs H's and the W's, and why it's so important for structured warrants to consider strategies like the Mercy strategy and the Naga matrix, as compared to company warrants, which you can consider premium, discount, expiry, volume, all these things. The main difference, if I can summarize these slides for you, is that it is a market maker that exists. Um, I see Henry Ting. Hey, Henry Ting, all the way from Cebu. Hello. Uh, any other person can't see the slides? If you can't see the slides, please press um, zero, Z-E-R-O in this chat so I can see. If you can see clearly, um, please press good, zero or good. Henry, you can't see my slides. It's all right. Our side, we can get somebody to private chat you later on. And I said, maybe they can see your slides. But in the meantime, don't worry. I'm just recapping last week. And I do remember seeing your name last week. Good, TCH, good. Lee Chin, good. All right, MC, good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the feedback. It makes me feel a bit less lonely. Tan BK, Tan BK, good. Super. Henry Ting, you log out first. All right, log back in. Uh, I'll keep this introduction a bit slow to, so you can catch up. So what we covered last week was also two things. There are trading ideas that are initiated on our Telegram channel. We've gone through a revamp where we try to keep things very clear and neat, especially for new warrant traders. So I know sometimes it gets a bit intimidating. There's so much information on the market. There's so many Telegram channels now. And yes, true enough, we were the first investment bank and retail bank ever to have Telegram back in 2017, a fact that I'm really happy about. And the thing is now, the market has evolved that everybody, every bank has a Telegram channel. No problem, I'm fine. I think it's very educational for the market to have very quick knowledge. However, when it comes to trading ideas, these are just ideas, right? Nobody can foresee the future. So the idea for this one was that you must always have some technical know-how and not just rely blindly on anybody giving you ideas. So let's say UWC, we talked about the support being here, 295 and 285, resistance being at 350, this line over here, these two lines over here, and look at the charts, what happens after that. So this is when we had the trading idea pop up, right? You can see it did go up for quite a few days. It went from two, three ringgit all the way to 320 plus. However, after that, there was a retracement. And if you have technical analysis background, you can actually take profit over there and benefits from that upswing before it does a retracement. Next thing is we covered also advantages and risks. We covered common mistakes that traders make. All of these things, for example, how, why you shouldn't average down on warrants. And these were all the questions that I've previously answered on our YouTube page, um, which we'll share as well. YouTube Kananga Group, I covered basics, strategies, HSI warrants, live matrix tools, issuers, expiry, corporate adjustments. 
All right. So let's get to it, guys. Let's go. So the first things we're going to cover last week uh, were the big ideas. We already did this. We did fund concepts, ROI, traders, barbell strategy. We did that last week. We, after that, we covered structured warrants, which I just went over, product comparison, types of warrants, warrants versus stocks, advantages, risks, common mistakes. And we also covered Fata Naga strategy, musty strategy, last defense strategy, musty strategy. So today, we're going to be looking much more into number four, important concepts, which are warrant ingredients. I'll zoom in so you guys can see better. There we go. I know you guys, even though I mentioned try to use your laptop while you watch these webinars, sometimes you use your phone and you do your potter around the house. I get it. I get it. So I'll zoom in for you. Warren's ingredients, moneyness, time value decay, automatic refills. This is always an interesting concept. A lot of people don't really realize it. Expiry, issuers and market makers. I'll cover how issuers and market makers, what is the difference between issuers, market makers, liquidity providers, what is the difference and what's the difference between that and, and how we actually make money from the market? Because when you understand the motivations of the person uh, issuing the product, then you understand whether you're on the same side or not. In this case, we are on the same side. When you guys make money, I make money. Unlike some other investment products, where they want you to keep on switching funds, for example, or they want you to keep on trading excessively, or they want you to attend their courses. It is clear that issuers, structured warrant issuers, especially our sides, we make money when you guys make money. We like return customers. I don't like it when you guys lose money. I want you guys to constantly win, so you guys will constantly be trading and improving your lives. Corporate actions, I'll just touch a bit on that because that's a very, very long topic. And finally, tools you need to know. But today I'm going to actually cover these tools first before I get to, I'm going to cover number five before I get to number four because I think it's a better flow from last week where we covered this. So I'm going to go into more detail with that right now. All right. So today I was actually at one of our branches at The Curve and uh, one of our remiseers actually asked us a bit more about elaborating on the musty strategy. So I would love to do that and this is the perfect opportunity. So musty strategy, it really is a strategy on how to choose warrants. So let me give you an example. If I actually go to our Naga Warrant Scanner over here, uh, this is our, there we go. This is on nagawarrants.com, you can see the top. And just so you know, a lot of people don't realize that we actually have these two on top. It's a Telegram private chat where you can actually press the button, it will link you to Telegram. And whenever you have any issues whatsoever, between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we are happy to answer all of your questions. And I mean, you can't always message at 5.30, but you might receive a response at 9 a.m. the next day, all right? Issuers need to sleep, even the warrants never sleep. So you can message us there. We answer your questions, anything in case you're shy, you don't want to message us on an email or a group chat. There is your perfect place because you can ask us one-to-one -one questions and you can keep asking until you understand structured warrants. Another great resource, is Telegram channel over here at Naga Warrants. If you just press that on top of the website, it will lead you to our Telegram channel, which I'll show you in a bit later on. All right, so the main idea, musty strategy. Let's say, for example, a popular stock at the moment is Public Bank, and I'm going to choose all issuers. So let's say this is the Warrant Scanner shows every single issuer on the Malaysian market. And right now for public bank, I can easily see there are nine warrants by all the issuers. And you can have something like all these different warrants available in the market. You've got nine warrants. And if you look over there, it's CAB, C1A, C1B, C1C, C1C, C1D, C1E. How to choose? Do you choose based on your birthday? I want public bank C88 because um, 
that was my child's birthday, um, 8th of August. Do I want public bank C10 because 10 is my lucky number? No, there is a strategy for it. And that's called the must-see strategy. So I'll teach you how to sort. So let's say if I've got 10, a whole bunch of nine public bank warrants, how do I choose the best one for me? There is no best warrant, I have to say, because every individual, they like to have different, whoa, the thunder, different preferences. So firstly, step one of the musty strategy is actually to use FATA, fundamental analysis to determine if your stock's intrinsic floor price is intrinsic value, sorry, is larger than the current price, it's higher. Because imagine if the current price is here, say 10 ringgit, and the market values it at 20 ringgits, then that's intrinsically, it should be going up according to fundamental analysis, right? If your company is worth three ringgits, but the current price is 10 ringgit, would you pick up that stock? Maybe yes, maybe no, but ideally no, because it is worth less. It is like buying something that is not worth the amount, which all of us Malaysians know how to do very well. Technical analysis, so it's FA then TA, right? FA, fundamental analysis, then TA, technical analysis, to determine your entry price, target price, and stop loss. All right, so that's the fundamental analysis part. So I can give you a bit of a cheat on how to do these things because I know it's overwhelming. Uh, one really great resource that I like looking at that is free for, if I'm not using the Bloomberg, for example, is if I'm looking for a lot of research reports, I would actually check out a website like pickastock.com. Now this website, it offers you all of the analysts, they show you consensus, you just write it down, you can check it out later. We have no collaboration with them. It's just a tool that I find useful. And for technical analysis, after this, I'm gonna show you a checklist of the technical analysis tools that I find very useful and my flow for it. So let's say technical analysis, let's get to that first. Technical analysis, the most convenient way I find is if I can actually have, all right, let's do a bit of a quiz first. Uh, Megan will give away three vouchers for this session for 50 ringgit. So first question I'm gonna ask you guys to see your understanding. Based on this chart from here, all the way to here, there's only three trends in the market, uptrend, downtrend, and sideways. Write in the chat which trends you think this is, uptrend, downtrend, or sideways. I'll choose the answers, we'll look over them tomorrow. Don't worry, don't have to be quick. The main thing is to get it accurately. So there are excellent, I see a lot of good answers. Yay! All right, we are technical people, we are technical. So the main thing, how do you identify a downtrend? There are a few different ways, but the main way that people would see it are according to definitions. So I can see that there are highs, so that means it is lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So I have a song that I teach my friends whenever they ask me things about technical analysis. And it really goes, it's pretty simple. It's higher highs, higher, higher highs, higher lows is uptrend. Lower highs, lower lows is downtrend. Sideways, and then there's sideways, well, there's sideways. So when you can never see there is lower highs, and lower lows, which is what I'm drawing now, then that is technically a downtrend, right? You can see that this high, H1, is a low, higher than H2, H3, H4, so on. And you can see that this low one is above low two, low three, low four, low five, etc. Forgive my terrible handwriting. Okay, so excellent. We can identify downtrend. So this is a chart that I'm using. I used a long-term chart, which is, I picked up a one-week chart. So we can tell at that moment, Hang Seng was at a downtrend. All right, next question. Midterm. I am looking at this part.
I'm looking at this part. What is it doing? Is it a higher high, higher low? Or is it a lower high and a lower low? While you guys answer, I just want to let you know that if you get confused sometimes, a useful barometer is to use a moving average. And you can learn that in a technical analysis class. I won't teach you that today. OK, great. I see a lot of uptrends. Very nice, guys. Very nice. Uh, Lee Seng Wan, higher high. Jesse, yep, uptrends, higher high. T. Stay what? higher high, uptrends. Awesome, guys. So yes, the answer is an uptrend for this section. And how about intraday? I am looking at this part. Intraday, these are one minute candlesticks. I see downtrends, LL, Keniku, that's a really great way, LL downtrend, right? So same thing as well. The main concept that I want to tell you guys, if any of you are HSI Warren traders, a great tip is actually to do this. Oh, Lee Seng Guan, UN, a lot of downtrends. Good, good, good. All right. We are aligned, guys. We're on the same page. I love technical analysis. The only things I'm good at are in life are dancing, reading, and technical analysis, honestly. <laughs> so let's say Hang Seng. It has the long term. So this time we looked at the long term, the medium term, right? Long term was from 20. I pulled it all the way from 2021 over here. And then the midterm, this was day charts, right? This was from 2023, early 2023. And then I looked at intraday, that means by the minute. You can see that these are 11, 11.30, 12, 12.30. So the big tip that I can give you for trading Hang Seng is that whenever you spot in the morning, you avoid 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. The reason is it hasn't really shown you its true colors. And only after 9.30 a.m. or 9.45 a.m., sorry, you can identify what it's going to do. So very easily, I can see even though it started over here the day before, it opens up high. And... Who can tell me what this pattern is when it hits the same line twice? What chart pattern is this? This one, no prizes, all right? I just want to see whether you guys know. A double top, Irfan, first one on it. Correct. Irfan, it's a double top. And a double top is a reversal pattern. That means it's going to come down. JYDT, perfect. So see, it tells you what it's going to do during the day at 9.45. The Hang Seng is like a girlfriend. If she wakes up with a black face, you just maintain your distance for the first half an hour when it opens from 9.15 to 9.45. Check it out, suss it out, and then only start trading. So once it came downtrend, it came up, touched the moving average, and you can see if, let's say, I actually saw it touch twice, one, two for confirmation. I bought it over here. I bought the put warrant. And then it tracked downwards within the Bollinger Bands. And only here, when it crossed the Bollinger Bands upwards, and you can see what does it do over here. My arrows show that it made a higher high from this low. I mean, a higher low, sorry. And another higher low. So this is L2, L3. This is L1. So then I can tell a reversal is happening, right? I can see my screen slightly lag for a moment. Are you guys OK? Can you hear my voice at least, even though my camera seems to be uh, weird for a second? Ah, there we go. I just restarted it. OK, so let's say. What I'm doing is I looked at the matrices. For these for HSI HKR, this was the example. And what I did was I actually tagged the rough point. So 21,000, 22,000, 20,000. I can tell when Hang Seng moves 500 points down, the matrix the price of warrants would have gone from 10 cents to seven and a half cents, and that is 33% ROI. And all I had to do was spot a 500 point move. And in this chart, 
you can tell to 20,000 to that time at 21,000, that is 1,000 points. So that's all you had to look at. So I'm actually looking at only half of this range and that will already give you 33%. I'm not even trying to catch the full range, right? If I manage to catch a full range technically from here to here, that is three times because that's about 22,000 to 21,000 to 20,000, well, maybe about 21,000, that's about 1,500 points. So you can consider midterm strategies if you are trading Hang Seng, but let's say if you're an intraday trader over here, and you notice this trend as well, the one that I just showed you, this is on the 20th of March. Sorry, this slide is a bit old because I didn't have time to update it, but the strategy still applies. I've been using this strategy since 2023. So what you can see is that from here, you enter there, you exit here. I'm not even entering at the highest of highs and I'm not even exiting at the lowest of lows. So from here, what I did was I plot accordingly. So I can see that here is nine and a half, ten. 10. Here is 10, 10 and a half on the matrix, 10 and a half, 11 here. I actually just draw it onto my trading view chart, which I love trading view, and it's plotted accordingly. And you can see intraday within this is at 10.15 to afternoon, 3.30. That's 300 points. That's 22% ROI in one afternoon. If that doesn't make you, inspire you to learn about structure warrants, then I don't know what this. That means you clearly do not care. Uh, but to me, that is really important to note. And what I wanted to show you, whoops, how come my erasings came back? What I wanted to show you the tips for technical analysis is number one, superimpose the life matrix on the chart like I showed you. Tip number two, consider Bollinger Bands and um, SR, support and resistances. I find that support and resistances, especially round numbers, work exceptionally well for Hang Seng Index Warren trading. And finally, a confluence, which means if you have a few technical analysis indicators hitting the same time, it is even better. Uh, Inari, I won't touch that at the moment. So this technical analysis, we're still at the tau for the fa tau, okay? Like I said, it's an advanced session. I'm going all in. Technical analysis, this is Isabel's don't be lazy technical analysis checklist. I hope you can see that. I'll zoom in for you. So the first thing you need to really learn is the introduction to technical analysis over here. Second thing is moving averages. Third thing and fourth, oscillators, you can touch a bit. But fifth is very important, Japanese candlesticks and Elliott waves, and but particularly Fibonacci. I find Fibonacci retracements and projections work exceptionally well in a Malaysian market compared to Elliott wave. Don't shoot me, that's just my personal opinion. So for technical analysis, it's really important to understand the pros and cons, Dow theory, volume, open interest, and now this first thing, chart construction. Uh, bar line, Japanese line charts and Japanese candlesticks, what are the differences? Basic concepts of trends, support resistances, trend lines, channels, percentage retracements, major reversal patterns. Tops, bottoms, double tops, triple tops, head and shoulders, V tops, rounding top and bottoms, wedges, diamonds. Major continuation patterns, you see this is reversal. Reversal means if it's going up, then it reverses. Oh, Wow, cool. I didn't know I can do that. Comes down. Reverse in pattern. Continuation pattern really means it's going up, takes a breather, and then it continues going up as well. Continue, continue. Descending triangles, flags, pennants, wedges, rectangles. We can't read my handwriting. Are continuation patterns. Three gaps. They are called common breakaway exhaustion gaps. Malaysian market stocks love to gap. But recently, in the past five to ten years, they don't close the gaps like they used to um, compared to the 1990s and the 2000 markets. And the three types of orders you can do, market orders, limit orders, and stop loss orders. So I hope that covers the beginning part of technical analysis. It's just a checklist. You guys can Google it in your own time, but the main thing is these are the most important things you need to understand. 
and the difference between a reversal pattern and a continuation pattern. There's no point spotting a double top, triple top, but you don't know that it actually means reversal, not continuation. Totally different concept. And of course, there are moving averages and rule turtle systems, moving average buy and sell signals, moving average crossovers, single, double, triple, and the pros and cons of it being a lagged indicator. Oscillators like stochastic oscillators, RSI and MACD, how to choose the level, how to spot trend changes are questions you need to ask yourself. The second you can answer all of these questions in my checklist, you know technical analysis. Japanese candlesticks, to put it simply, there are single, double, triple con reversal patterns, single, double, triple continuation patterns. And the most important question to ask yourself is, what re which pattern requires confirmation? Which pattern requires confluence, right? And finally, for the Elliott Wave and Fibonacci that I always use as well, I will always say, look at to the rules of it and understand the pros and cons of retracements and projections. So everybody, okay so far? If you're okay, please press okay in the chats. If you're not okay, please press K.O. Isabel, K.O. No more, no more technical analysis. I don't understand. I don't like drawing, drawing. I like to lose money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wong, K.O. It's okay. You can K.O. the first time. When I learned technical analysis, I went for so many courses until I really, really understood it. Okay. So what I want to cover right now is the musty strategy in advance. So like I said, the musty strategy, let me zoom back to that slide. Our first goal was number one, fundamental analysis. My tip, my tip for you was check out the pick a stock website, pickastock.com. My second tip for technical analysis is to use the checklist and really understand three questions. Number one, what's a reversal pattern? Number two, what is a continuation pattern? And number three, which patterns require confirmation? And if you can put those all together, right? For example, there is a uh, there is a chart pattern breakout, there is a moving average uptrend, and there is a Japanese candlestick um, reversal going upwards. Three things, for example, and it's touching the bottom of a Fibonacci support line. Then it's like four different things telling you it's going to go up. It's like confirm, confirm the guy that you're dating. He's good to his parents. He likes, um, he's nice to uh, waiters. He likes stray animals and he is good with managing money. You know, it's like a few things, you know, combination, combination, okay, confluence. All right. So fundamental fata, we understand. Now, the next part of musty is how to choose a great warrant. First thing you need to have is that M. That issuer should provide a live matrix. Everything in warrants is dynamic and it helps you time your entry price, target price and stop loss points. Uh, Kananga equity and of course our index warrants come with live matrices. So great. First thing you need to make sure the issuer has M matrix. Second thing you need to do is look at E. High effective gearing really means, let's say, if top glove C74's effective gearing is 1.84 times, it means the top glove itself goes up 1%. Top glove C74 will go up 1.84%. This also means if top glove C74, it goes, a top glove mother share goes down 1%. The top glove C74, for example, let me use a different color pen. Sorry, I like color, color, drawing, drawing. All right, life is already so boring and black and white. So let's say if it goes down 1%, that means top gloves warrants as well will go down 1.84% because the effective gearing, the effective gearing is 1.84 times. So that's, I'll tell you the pros and cons of it later. Next, 
tick sensitivity. We're going to be covering ticks in the next slide, actually. So just remember S for sensitivity. Finally, sufficient time to expiry. The main thing is avoid trading and holding a warrant with less than one month to expiry. Let's say your warrant has six months remaining. Can your stock hit the target price within five months so you can avoid the final month? It is like buying yogurt or milk. If you know the expiry is going to be 31st of December, can you finish your milk by the 30th of November? That's the concept. And finally, choose a responsible issuer. I can tell you that there are some issuers that actually like to tweak their vaults during the day, and there's nothing wrong with that, but some issuers like to drop their vaults. I can tell you at Naga Warrants, we don't drop our vaults. The only way we tweak our vaults is we actually increase our volatilities. This means if you are having low price warrants or you're buying a warrant, say it's 13 cents, and an issuer actually always has a reputation of increasing the vols. That means even though you're holding at 13 cents, you didn't do anything else, the warrants will increase to 14 cents, for example. We don't drop the vols, we only increase them. And what's the logic of us increasing vols? The logic is, let's say, if my product is selling really well, then the volatility can be increasing as well on the mother share. I could be selling it at a higher price. I won't be selling it at a lower price, right? Unless I'm trying to do something really weird and hanky panky. But for our Naga warrants, uh, you know my face, you know my name, you have my Instagram. We only drop, we only increase vaults. We don't drop the vaults. And step three for the Mercy strategy is double check your risks. And you can do this on the matrix as well. So today is the advanced session. So that was the beginners, just to recap. We're going to go into the advanced session. Everybody take a deep breath on the Mercy strategy. Okay. So the advanced view on it is in this part of my table. So this part of advanced looks at effective gearing, sensitivity, and days. Okay, so you learned all of this already. Musty, let's go to this session. So effective gearing. I hope you can see this is the most I can zoom at the moment. Okay. These warrants that have very high effective gearing, what is the pros and what are the cons? So let's say, let me delete all the necessary stuff and use a different color pen. Okay. Effective gearing. When a warrant is very deep in the money over here, that means it has a tendency to be more expensive. So very high effective gearing warrants tend to be maybe, let's say, let me exaggerate for you, uh, RM1. Okay. And very cheap warrants, which are very deep out of the money, can be maybe RM 0. Why am I writing US dollars one second and ring it one second? Okay, so here is RM 1. And here is RM 0. 0.005. Let's say half cent warrants, right? We have half cent warrants, we have one cent warrants. But what is the problem with this? Why would people like buying half cent warrants? Can anybody tell me in the chat? If a half cent warrant goes up to say one cent, it goes up to RM 0 0.01, what is the ROI? Why do people like to buy? Uh, what's the ROI for this? This is the mindset, right? I buy a cheap warrant or a cheap thing. Chow Yu An, correct. And Tan BK, 100% correct. High gearing, which is why people like to buy, right? Stefan Tan, correct. Double X, the ROI. So why can't I just, Isabel, why must you make it so complicated? Chong Kum Fat got it right as well, 100%. So why, Isabel, must you make it so complicated? Why can't I just buy the highest possible effective gearing warrant? I buy a 50% effective gearing warrant. So if the underlying moves 1%, the warrants will go up 50%. The reason is because these warrants that are very high in effective gearing, they are also very insensitive. Let me show you there. Let me move this part away. So you can see, 
When a warrant has very high effective gearing, let's say it's very cheap on this side, right? It is very deep out of the money. Here. So here's also deep out of the money. That warrant tends to have many, 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 many ticks. So we've seen issuers publish warrants with 50 ticks. 50 ticks is fine if it's a Hang Seng Index warrant because Hang Seng Index can move 500 points in a day. But let's say if it is uh, very insensitive, 50 ticks, it means it is really hard for it to go from, like I said, RM 0 0.005 to RM 0 0.01. It is really hard. It takes 50 ticks, 100 ticks, which is just ridiculous. So the idea is to find a warrant which has a sweet spot with high effective gearing, but few tick sensitivity. So your sweet spot is roughly at the money, or maybe according to your preference, it is easier if you ask me to look at effective gearing and ticks. Uh, if you want a shortcut, it is easy to look at warrants that are approaching at the money, which is how we price our warrants at uh, Naga Warrants. So you can see a warrant that is very deep in the money can be something like an RM1 warrant. And an RM1 warrant can move extremely fast, but then why would you want to buy it, right? Because the effective gearing would be very low, even though it's very sensitive. So the idea is to find a sweet spot between this part. All right, so if everybody understands this concept of being able to balance effective gearing and sensitivity, please press balance in the chat. While I move my slides around. Balance, Tan BK, balance. All right, good. I appreciate you guys um, typing in the chats as well. At least I know I'm making sense. If not, if I see a lot of people don't understand, uh, if you don't understand, please press KO again as well. So I know that it's understandable. So the idea, the tip for this one is you want to have high effective gearing and few tick sensitivity, few, high. All right, Jesse, yep, KO, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You have to watch the video a few times to understand, all right? But this is the easiest way I can explain it and I can tell you no other issuer explains it like this because uh, people sometimes they don't care they just want you to buy but I care all right so the next part is we're going to cover what we were speaking about the ticks part in more detail and that's the last defense strategy so the three key features about the last defense strategy is available on our website, but the three key features for this traffic, I mean, this Naga matrix is shown over here. Number one, this easy thing, it shows you traffic lights. Number two, it shows you gray and white zones. And number three, it shows you pink for puts. So for example, if a warrant, let's say, has these colors, right? What are all these colors? You only see, I mean, ignore the pink stuff and the blue stuff. Okay, that's Isabel's drawings, all right? But let's say a warrant is green. That means over here, a warrant is good to trade. Bid and offer spread is tight. So that means a warrant, let me just cover a bit first. This is covering dialogue, dialogue's bid price, dialogue's offer price, and then for dialogue C1E, it is the warrant's bid price and dialogue C1E's offer price. So it goes underlying, underlying warrants, warrants, okay? Uh, some issuers, they show their prices on a different scheme. So just be aware of that as well. But I find this the easiest. All right. So when a warrant is, say, good to trade, that means the bid offer spread is tight. Three cents, three and a half, for example, Two and a half cents, three cents, for example. Secondly, if the matrix is the orange, and that is over here, say for example, Sci Park CA, we had traders ask us about that before. So, what this really means is that you see the underlying, it is 81 cents on the bid, 81 and a half cents on the offer for Sci Park. However, the warrants bid, we maintain it at a fair price, which is four and a half cents but we increase the offer to five and a half cents. 
Now, can anybody tell me why issuers do that? What's the reason for this logic? If somebody increases a price uh, for the offer, but then they maintain the bid, what does that mean? Typically, an issuer is low on inventory. Exactly, Chong Comfort. You're discouraging sales, right? Or low stock, low inventory, Tan BK, correct. So it means that I'm running low on stock. So I don't want people to buy anymore because I don't want to fully run out inventory. I'm already running low. The traffic light is at orange. Don't put it, right? I'm already running low on inventory, but I maintain the fair bid price at four and a half cents. So you can always sell it back to me. You can always sell Thai Park PA back to the issuer at four and a half cents. You notice that I didn't drop the bid price. The traffic light is on the offer price because we only move the offer price. But we maintain the bid price, which is four and a half cents. So you can always sell it back to the issuer at all of these fair prices on the market. But you, can't, you shouldn't be buying it. But let's say, because you guys had advanced, I'm going to tell you how you can actually buy it. Sometimes on the market, you would see that Cy Park CA, for example, is at four and a half cents and five cents. But is that the issuer queuing to sell at five cents? No. That is maybe another retail participant trying to exit at five cents. And they're hoping that you buy it from them. So if you actually die, 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 want to buy side part CA, that is why you call, all right. Say you really, really, really want to buy side part CA, then you can consider buying it at five cents. However, let's go in the opposite direction. If it is five cents, okay, this is a complicated part. So wish me luck explaining it to you guys, but I think you can get it. So let's say Cy Park is over here. Let's use the example of YTL Power, C42. And this one has an even bigger increased offer. So when it gets in above a few cents, 32 cents was the price at the moment, and the warrant was 35 cents. The problem is you can always exit. Exit is no problem. But you shouldn't be entering this warrant. Let's say if a warrant over here is 35 cents and I really, 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 really want to exit, I can actually get a bonus profit. Let's say somebody on the market is queuing 34 and a half and 35, right? But the issuer is offering 32. If you sell it to this person who is queuing another retail client, you're actually getting bonus profit. So this strategy is for advanced traders. You can actually see that you can get more than what the issuer is offering. 34 and two cents, 34 and a half versus 32 cents. That's a bonus profit if you can exit to that and somebody is queuing. So like I said from the start, over here, you can use over here, you can show that. If it's green, you can enter new positions, but you shouldn't enter if it's orange or red. On this hand, however, for exiting current positions, you can exit on all of them. And these two for orange and red, you might even receive bonus profit if somebody else is queuing there. But the main thing to remember, if it's orange and red, do not enter. Okay, was that, was that understandable? If you understand, please press bonus. If you don't understand, please press die. All right, I saw a question come in. Let me answer that in just a moment. So why quantity for Xiong Kong? Why quantity is high, quite high for us price if retailer is selling, especially in Hang Seng index warrants? It is because there are market makers there. So for our Hang Seng index warrants, based on market feedback, individuals wanted uh, bid an offer to not just be 100, 200K, but they want it to be 3 million to 5 million quantity. So that's why we have big sizes on both the bid and the ask. Wait, sorry, I'll do since you're inverse of me, bid and ask for Hang Seng Index Warrants. That's the reason. All right, everybody understands bonus. Oh my goodness, so smart. <laughs> so nice. Anybody pressing die in the chats for this one? 
Okay, no diet. Besides, uh, it's pantang to say die anyway. Hungry goes festival month. <laughs> uh, Siong Kok, sorry, I'm referring to amber traffic light. Uh, your question, we can only high for us price. We still are selling. Uh, it is because we do re we do reduce the size as well for Hang Seng index warrants. But Siong Kok, you can always message us in the private chat. Screenshot, show me so I can explain it to you a bit further. I'm not really sure what your question really means at the moment, but I need to get on with the show for now. But I do want to answer your question too. So musty strategy, let's try put it into a case study. So let's say I just now what I did this afternoon was I screenshot public bank, for an example, with the nine different issuers, right? I mean, nine different warrants that are available in the market. So how do I apply this musty strategy? So number one is M. Uh, let me, there we go. Number one is M. So for musty, I need to make sure that the issuer has a musty uh, matrix. Currently at the moment, uh, all these issuers have matrices. You can see the issuer that I didn't take doesn't have a matrix. Effective gearing. So what I did was here. I sort it from high to low. So I press this button over here and then it sorts from 27, 14, 13, 12, 6, 6, 6, 5, 4. So high to low, right? Big to small. So that's E. Next thing I look at is sensitivity, ticks, S. The reason I didn't call it ticks for, for the third one, I want to be meti strategy. It doesn't really sound very good. So mercy strategy is for sensitivity. How sensitive this warrant is to your feelings. So let's say if I look at public bank, public bank can maybe move about five, 10 cents on a day, possible, right? So I want maybe a warrant that has about two to three ticks sensitivity so that I can actually have it flip. So two ticks, perhaps five ticks, not bad. 10 ticks, maybe not. Four ticks, uh, I'm looking for something between two and three for public bank. So maybe not, something like that. And then let's say the next one is T, time to expiry. You can see that I arranged the, our website accordingly. So what was my thing about having uh, traffic, not traffic lights, what was my thing about time to expiry? The time to expiry concept was that it must have more than one month to expiry because time value decay, which we'll be covering later, is exceptionally high. So you're trying to make money on the underlying, right? If it's the uptrend. And then you're trying to outweigh the time value decay, which is causing your warrant price to go down. Why do you want to fight so hard? Choose a warrant that has enough time to expiry. So let's say this one, eight days, maybe not. Uh, 57 days, let's say I have a holding period of two weeks. So 57 minus two weeks, it is just cutting into the three days, I mean the 30 days, so maybe not. Um, maybe, maybe 60, 176, maybe, 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 right? And finally, to choose an issuer with a live matrix, you can see which issuers already have live matrix over here. So that, this is the issuer. So that is how you would really choose warrants based on such criteria. I won't really go so much into stuff like implied volatility because unless an issuer changes the implied volatility, it doesn't matter so much for a retailer. And let's say if it's, ah, the question from Jesse, can we choose a warrant which is at the money? Yeah, sure. But remember, to if you want to choose a warrant that is at the money, Jesse, does that make warrants say that at the money it solves this problem of effective gearing and sensitivity but then you need to also remember the three let me erase my messy drawing so at the money atm solves e and s but it doesn't solve matrix time and issuer. So yeah, you can choose a warrant that is approaching at the money, which is, can be very attractive, but you need to remember there are three other components missing from the five. All right, understand, Jesse? Okay, so that's how you would choose warrants. 
So just a reminder, you want high, I'm just repeating because I want to drill it in properly. You want high effective gearing, but you want low ticks, few ticks. And for uh, advanced traders, this is what I mentioned earlier. Cheap warrants that is very uh, out of the money may have high effective gearing, but high number of ticks as well. And that's why half cent warrants flip so slowly. All right, I think we covered Mercy strategy quite well. Uh, SW, Isabel, so based on this chart, which public bank warrants will you purchase? Easy. I would choose the Naga warrants one, right? Not only because I believe in our product and because we actually do have uh, the features like I mentioned, we don't drop our volatilities. We don't do any funny uh, market on market behavior. We are accountable for everything. You can always message us on Telegram if you have any inquiries at all. So based on these things, not just based on MEST, I for me is a very important factor as well. So SW, I believe in our product, so I would choose the Naga Warrens hands down. How the how S is cheap, but risk managing as well, not pick out of the money warrants, correct? And just an additional thing for all of you advanced traders today. Why do people choose out of the money warrants? Is it bad to choose out of the money warrants? Not really. Why is it okay to choose out of the money warrants, even though at expiry, it is going to end up worthless? Because based on the FATA strategy, you are looking at exiting the warrants when it hits your target price, not for uh, exercise not for conversion, which is what people might do for a company warrant. So even though you might choose based on different factors out of the money warrants, as long as you exit before the final month, it hits your target price, it is okay to trade out of the money warrants. So, but just be clear that out of the money warrants are very insensitive. And deep out of the money warrants are very insensitive. Slightly out of the money warrants are still all right. All right, so the last things we're going to cover are, we already did this. Well done, team. We're going to cover four important concepts. Warrants, ingredients, moneyness, automatic refills. The interesting ones are these two. Take a deep breath, everybody. It's 9 o'clock. I'm going to try to finish everything by 9.15, 9.20, so that we can have time for a Q&A, all right? So take a big stretch. Let's go. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> me too, guys, me too. Equity warrants, ingredients. So I know it looks confusing, this thing, but you need to know what warrants are made of. Equity warrants, I'm going to cover later um, Hang Seng warrants as well, but I'm just going to cover equity first, okay? I'm going to cover in this section, equity, then Hang Seng, and then equity, then Hang Seng. So equity warrants, the main ingredients for a structured warrants are underlying price. Let me zoom in to what I'm focusing on at this moment. Underlying price, exercise price, time to expiry, volatility, interest rate, dividends. The reason I show the arrow is because when all of these things go up, the greens, uh, oops, wrong color. All of these greens go up, the warrant price goes up. And when these things go up, uh, go down, same thing as well. Okay, so first thing is, let's, let me zoom properly. The question this slide is trying to answer is if I know all the ingredients that make your cake, does anybody see our TikTok on cake making? How as the nice still early take easy can extend time. <laughs> Did anybody see the TikTok that we did uh, just wandering over there? So what we covered was the ingredients of a structured warrant. Why can't I just use these ingredients and then price my warrants myself? How come it's so hard to get to this and I can't price my own Excel table and then plot the price for public bank all the way to it ringgit myself? The reason is because you don't know the exact 
interest rates being used by the issuer, the volatility, and the dividend as well. You don't know exactly, exactly. You can deduce, but you don't know exactly. The easiest thing is to just refer to the life matrix. So when you know that public bank C1F, public bank is 5459, then you would know that, sorry, I drew over the words. So when public bank is here, 459, I would know that the warrant C1F is 16 and a half on the bid. So that's the easiest way. That's why I said it's so important to have a matrix. If not, you won't know. You won't know how long it takes for a public bank C1F to flip from 16 and a half to 17 cents. So let's say issuers use this Black Scholes Merton um, option pricing formula. It's a Nobel winning prize formula. And you won't know the issuer's exact thing. So you can do this. Every issuer knows well. First thing I did was train on how to use the formula and calculate it myself on an Excel. That is a task that all of us have to do as new warrant issuers. But the thing is, it is tricky because you don't know those things. So let's say this first slide that I'm going to cover is ratio. So public bank is 459 closing today. I just screenshot this now. C1F is 16 and a half. We get that exercise price for C1F. Is 450. That means this warrant is what? Is this warrant in the money, at the money, or are the money? Exercise is 450. Public bank, the underlying is 459. Answer in the chat. So no prizes, but let's see how smart you are. Time to expiry is 26 May 2025. Ratio in the money, in the money, chunk comfort, Rina. Excellent. Good job, Wong and Rina. Comfort and the rest. Ratio is three. Volatility is 34 cents, for example, okay? What this ratio thing, which we're going to focus on now, which is here, is how do you know if an issuer is offering you a good or not ratio? What does it really mean? So a rule of thumb that I can tell you for retail clients is that ratio should be approximately the same as the divisor, so the warrants are sensitive. So an example here, if the underlying is 50 ringgit, 20 ringgit, or 10 ringgit underlying, then the ratio should be approximately 10 to 1. If it is RM 800, 200, 100, then an acceptable ratio is 100 to 1. If it is USD 3000, 2000, which USD in America, there are quite a lot, then an acceptable ratio is 1000 to 1. Does that make sense? So you know whether a ratio is being fared or not, because a ratio is used by issuers to cut the warrant into many pieces. So let's say if I cut a RM5 underlying, right, and I cut it with 100 to 1, is that a fair ratio? No, because I'm cutting the slice of cake you're getting too small. Too, 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 too small. That means the warrants will be very insensitive for you. Okay, so just remember, it's like a cake. If you cut the cake into too many slices with a ratio, it is unfair because it won't move very fast. Okay, so we covered the ratio. Second thing. How do you calculate intrinsic value, time value, et cetera, et cetera? Wait, what's my next? Ah, oh, this is the correct one. That slide didn't have the next part. So this slide, let's say I need a cal I want to calculate my intrinsic value and time value. So intrinsic value plus time value equals this. This plus this equals this, but how do I get 16 and a half, right? The formula is pretty simple, which I'll show you here. Step one is actually to calculate the intrinsic value. Step number one, easy peasy. I really make things so easy for you guys, right? Intrinsic value is underlying price, which is 459 minus the strike price, which is 450. So it is nine cents. Nine cents, then you need to do it divided by the ratio. So that means each warrant's intrinsic value is three cents. So how do I find out step two, the time value? 
Time value is the Warren price minus intrinsic value, so that's 16 and a half cents minus three cents, and that's 13 and a half. So these two things, which is three cents plus 13 and a half equals 16 and a half. Ching, ching, ching. Okay, same concept applies for Hang Seng index warrants as well. Everybody all right with that? Intrinsic value and time value? Same thing applies for Hang Seng. I don't need to get into it. It is exactly the same concept, except with a bit of uh, Forex stuff. But same concept applies. More into moneyness and how it affects your warrant. So let's say there's an example we're using, Malakoff CQ. And Malakoff is right now the exercise price. That means the water level. Okay, the water level of Malakoff is at 388. 388. Uh, maybe it's not the best way to describe it. All right, let me show you this way. 3.88. So if right now Malakoff is trading at 3 cents, I mean 3 ringgits, Hold up, these slides, I got them wrong for this one. So actually this should be, luckily I do my own slides so I can get them nice and corrected for you. Okay, so if the exercise price is Malakoff, three bucks, that means it is out of the money. If it is four ringgits, that means it is in the money. So let me put that for you graphically. If it's four ringgit, that means it's higher than the exercise price. It is in the money. If it is, this serves me right for doing my slides at the last moment, three ringgit, it is out of the money. And so the main thing is you can see that uh, don't know how to swim will be out of the money. Uh, Siongkok, I think don't know how to swim will be, I don't know. De I don't even want to say it. So let's say the intrinsic value that we covered just now, you can see how it maintains over there, right? But it is the time value components that actually decreases over time. 5th March to 5th May to 5th July. And you can see how it kind of maintains there and suddenly towards the end, it's like a waterfall effect. It drops really fast in the final month before expiry. Same example I'm using for index warrants. Let's say if it's the water is here at 17,000. And if the warrant is trading here at 19,000, 19K, it is in the money. If it is trading, if the underlying is at 17, then it is at the money. So here's in the money. Here's at the money. And here, 15,000 is below the water. So it is out of the money. Okay. Same thing as well. Time value decay. Uh, this is an example of moneyness for out of the money warrants. Time value. Okay. Finally, let's hurry up a bit. Expiry equity. So for expiry, let's say I'm looking at a Maybank warrant for this one. I've got my exercise price. The water is at one ringgit. So it expires in the money. That means I get a cash settlement amount. And this is the formula to cash Calculate that cash settlement amount over here, okay? If it is out of the money, OTM, that means what happens if you have a warrant that expires out of the money? Who can tell me? How much money do you make if the warrant expires out of the money, it expires below the strike price? All right. Chong Kong Fat, A, Liao Yuk Long, no money, zero, correct. So this applies for warrants that are expiring. If you happen to hold it until expiry, I don't recommend holding warrants until expiry unless you just so happen to have that position. 
but let's say. The simple way to calculate it would be settlement price. So I'm taking all of these days, one, two, three, four, five, the five days view up, minus exercise, divide by the ratio, which was over here. And so that means upon expiry, I get 17 cents per warrant when my underlying is above at ITM. My head is above the water. That is me swimming. For Hang Seng Index, same thing as well. This formula is available on our term sheet on nagawarrants.com. We have all our term sheets for all the warrants over there. The tricky part is you can calculate all of these things. The ones that I tick are things that you would know. However, you may not know exactly the settlement exchange rate, and you may not know a few other things. For example, exercise ratio, I can get from there on a term sheet. The exercise level, I can get over there. Hong Kong dollars, the index currency amount, I can get over there. So this is how you calculate your cash settlement amount. What I don't know actually is the closing level. But don't worry, even if you don't know it, we actually issue all of these on our web on Bursa's website. We'll have these uh, postings that go up our announcements by our announcement side, and then they will show you exactly the formula of whether your warrant has expired in or out of the money on that month. Last topic, issuers. Everybody all right with me so far? 926. I'm doing my best to keep time, guys. But like I said, advanced session, I really go advanced for you guys. So an issuer has three roles. That is, as an issuer, number one, I offer price guidance and I facilitate price discovery. I use option pricing models. Number two, as a market maker or a liquidity provider, where a market maker will post bid and offer prices and offer liquidity. So what happens is, this is Maybank, and this is Maybank C75, for example. The red circles, or let me in this case circle it in a different color. Let's choose purple. So over here on the market, you will see, you won't be able to see this part. Okay. What you can see is 500K at two and a half, 500K at three. So an issuer's obligation, it is on the market making guidelines by Bursa. If we issue a warrant, we must also provide liquidity for it. Because we can't issue a warrant and then not provide liquidity, then after that, it'll be totally zero. Right? There's no price there. Die. The only person you can see queuing here on this warrant is this lonely guy over here trying to exit at nine cents, 14,000. Okay, but let's say if I had no issuer queuing over there, what would I be seeing? So an issuer would be queuing at the bid and offer. That's our obligation. And our life matrix, our Naga matrix shows you where we're queuing. So let's say if there was no issuer, no liquidity provider, no market maker, right? What would it look like? It would look like this. So you would see none of this. You would see none of this. So you know what your bid and us would be? You would be seeing your bid at two cents and your offer at nine cents. Would you buy a warrant like that? That's ridiculous, right? That is highly irresponsible if I issue a warrant and the bid is two cents and the offer is nine cents. So that's why there are liquidity providers in the market or market makers. So whenever somebody asks, why is it always a round number and stuff like that? Is it uh, who's manipulating the market? No, it is the market making system that we have that is pumping in prices and pumping in quantity for you to trade. So there's always somebody, the house is always there. Okay. And like uh, somebody asked earlier, or let me just tell you anyway, for Hang Seng Index warrants, for example, it can be something like 3 million. being queued over here by the issuer of 5 million, right? Hedging, another situation that we do is it's a win-win situation. 
That means if you win, we win. So a hedger, uh, the hedging role ensures that the bank doesn't have a naked position on the warrants. So when an issuer sells a call warrants, the is the they must buy an underlying share to hedge their position. And they can buy an assortment of things as long as they hedge it. So if a share price increases, then the traders profit. Issuers will also gain on the underlying. So that's how issuers make money. Okay. Sorry, not sold out, announced yet. We do announce. So good. Issuers, we're done. Market maker, the auto refill feature. Okay, so let's say if Mr. Gigi buys 500,000 at three cents, what happens? The system will automatically refill three cents in seconds. In this case, these days we're using milliseconds. So until an issuer runs low on inventory or the underlying price change. So that means, let's say, if you want to buy 10 million units of Maybank C75 at three cents, you can keep on buying because the system will keep on refilling until we run out of inventory, number one, or until the underlying price changes and Maybank moves from 813 to another price. This is assuming it's a one tick warrant. So what happens is you'll see the price. So the system has to refill, right? So let's say you're buying 10 million units. What happens is look at this. It will disappear for just a moment on your screens and then it will immediately reappear. So the market making system will automatically fill up the inventory. Let's say I've got 35 million in my issuance. I will keep on putting 500K, 500K, 500K there until I run up inventory or until Maybank moves. And finally, uh, this was for corporate adjustments. So this is our last session for today. Yay, we have reached the goal, guys. Let's say if I want to find out a bit more about corporate adjustments, I can go to Kananga Group. We'll send the two playlists that we have over here. You just go to Kananga Channel, you press Playlists, and you can see all of the playlists that we've done. But what you really want to look out for is the advanced webinar. So advanced webinar, it shows you the, this is one hour. Beginner structured warrants is one hour, as you can see, 50 minutes and 41 seconds. These were done in 2022, so I've actually revamped them and we're planning to shoot new ones as well. And we answer all the questions, including easy answers to structured warrants. All our videos are two to three minutes each. Structured warrants versus company warrants. What are structured warrants made of? So this is a recap of everything we've covered today. And if you want to know more about corporate adjustments, it is a quite a long video. That's why I'm not going to cover it today. It's about 13, 14 minutes long. So you can just press that. And what I actually cover in this video, uh, apart from the commercial break, which we're having. So you can see over here in this video, I cover all the stuff, which is mainly, that's me three years ago. Bonus issues, stock splits, subdivisions, rights issues, special dividends. I cover all of these in this video. So if you want to know a bit more about corporate adjustments and how it affects structured warrants, I put it there as well. But we just won't be covering it today in the interest of time and the fact that I've already covered it. So let's see anything else to look at. We've done all of this. We've done all of this. Yay, 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 yay. Any more giveaways? Oh, yes, there's one more giveaway. Careful, Isabel, don't give away the answer. Okay. So we've covered everything, guys. If you've attended last week and this week in about two, three hours, you've covered everything you need to know about structured warrants basic. If you don't understand it, don't worry. You can always rewatch the videos. We publish, uh, we publish them. And after that, you can watch them on YouTube. Just as a sweetener, I gave you Mr. Joshua Ng's top picks. This is the market outlook that we had recently with Mr. Joshua Ng. Every single year, our calendar looks like this. 
We've got quarterly updates, um, quarterly market outlook from Mr. Joshua Ng. He's our head of research. And now we have a brand new head of research, which I'll be very happy to introduce you um, on our ma next market outlook. Every month, we've got a different sector outlook. It can be tech, telecoms is coming up, oil and gas, energy, um, and every single sector we cover, we've got analysts for it. We do that every single month. So the head of research covers quarter by quarter, sector covers these and for warrants and sgx they are ad hoc uh, sgx is timed as well but for warrants if you want to know a bit more please write that on our kananga facebook as well then we can have more of these beginner and advanced sessions or if you want an english or malay or mandarin session like the ones we're having coming up please write as well so that wraps up our session for today not bad 9 35 p.m uh, if any of you want to head off, no problem. But if you want to I'll stick around for five minutes for Q&A if any of you have questions. So please free, feel free to ask me questions in the chat. Du, 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 du. All right, Richie, are structured warrants suitable for a person who does not have good skills in technical analysis and fundamental analysis? I'd say no, unfortunately. The real reason I tell you this is pretty simple. If you cannot make money in stocks, then you 100% cannot make money in structured warrants. Even though structured warrants are easy, they are accessible, they are listed on the market, it doesn't mean that it's easy to trade structured warrants. They are very sophisticated, as you can see from today's presentation. They are difficult and they are worth it. You've seen the ROI on it. But if you don't have good technical and fundamental know-how, I would recommend getting exceptionally good at these two. If you can trade stocks for one year consistently and always uh, respect your target price and your stop loss, you can actually target price hits, you exit. Stop loss hits, you exit. You've shown some discipline in that. Then you can consider learning about structured warrants. But if you don't have any good skills in either one, Structured warrants are not for you right now. They can be for you in maybe six months to one year once you brush up on those skills. Any other questions? Edison, may I know why Naga Warrants team recommends HSI HWW, which is short and expiry with only one month left, shall be traded well on longer expiry warrants? Well, Edison, uh, the reason is because for Hang Seng Index, currently we see the markets favoring traders, the market demand right now are traders who trade uh, for a few days. For example, they trade intraday or they trade two to three days or three to five days. So with that in respect, HSI is a different product compared to equity warrants because equity warrants, which are Malaysian equity warrants, for example, Gunting, people would hold on and trade that warrant for maybe two weeks to three weeks to see a nice upswing. But Hang Seng is so volatile that for intraday traders, they can consider these because the time value decay doesn't even kick in. They are trading intraday. Stefan T, I noticed when someone buys, oh, sorry, my screen flipped. Someone buys 15 million warrants in one shot. I don't see issuers buying in the underlying immediately. Is that standard practice? Yeah, Stefan, uh, for our hedging, we actually have our own indulgence on the period of when we can hedge. So for example, just to give you a few scenarios, let's say 15 million, somebody could buy Hang Seng Index on HWW, but somebody has simultaneously sold 15 million units on the put the call warrants. So somebody bought 15 million on the call, somebody sold 15 million on the put, it kind of balances off. And also, it is not obligatory to hedge within that minute as well. Tan BK, what is the next step to take if the Warren matrix goes orange color on the next day after EP? Entry price, I'm assuming, yeah, Tan BK? So the next step, like I said, if you actually entered a warrant and it becomes orange, no problem, zero problem. You can always exit at the fair bit price. Let me show you the slide over here. Like your question is regards to this part. 
Oops, I won't do that part. Okay. So your question is in regards to this bit. If you've already answered, you EP already, you answered, and then you want to exit, no problem. No problem. You can always exit at a fair bit price. It is not answering, not taking a new position, new position when it's orange and red. Okay, you don't go into a new one, but you can always exit your current one. Richie noted, thanks. Hey, thank you, Richie. Appreciate it. Jesse Y, how do you determine SL placements and can SL work on stop loss limit GTD? Uh, possible. For stop loss, it really depends on your own risk reward ratio. There is no one way to do it. Jesse Y. But for me, because I am very technical, I will put my stop loss at the technical support. So let's say here, this is our trading idea that we published. So let's say I would see this trading idea on the 1st of July. And the 1st of July would be here, exactly this date. I can see that right now the price is here this candlestick. When I read this Telegram channel and I spotted this piece of trading and idea, and I can see that the support line that the issuer gave, well, the issuer gave this Kananga research, is 360 and 350, which is here, this line, and this line. This is support one, support two. So then I will put my stop loss, honestly, just below my entry point. I can see that I was entered over here, Maybe here, stop loss. Just below, maybe 358. And then I look at the matrix and I concurrently look for the warrants and that price as well, the corresponding warrant price. So let's say if I actually miss Monday, and even though our trading ideas go out every Monday, 9 a.m., maybe you only caught it on Thursday or Friday, and it was already trading here, right? Inari was already here. And you're like, oh, I missed it when it's here. I missed the, I missed the post. I missed the post. But have a look. Would you have your stop loss here as well? That's silly, right? You would actually put your stop loss somewhere closer. So, for example, you can use a trailing one bar stop, and then you can see that here there was a gap. I'll put my stop loss there. Something like that. Technicals teach you all of this. So when it goes up, it hits a TP, fantastic, you exit, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, more than one week to exit when Inari was above 395, right? It went to a high of four something. So then you have to exit there. You make sure you exit and you don't just take a screenshot and show your friends, all right? So I would say that's how I would do a stop loss. It depends on your entry price. Ang Li Chen, thank you. Uh, Jesse, why will you be doing Nikkei soon? We're always open to suggestions. Uh, so if you really want it and you plan to buy, say, uh, any warrants, we have listening to market demand. So if traders want to buy 5 million, 10 million, there's market demand for it, then yeah, sure. Why not Jesse? But we've seen other issuers issue Nikkei before and they are practically untraded, right? Nobody's buying them. Nobody's selling them. It's like se opening a nasi lemak stall, a nasi, I don't know, dog feet nasi lemak stall, and nobody's buying. Okay, nobody is buying that at the moment. Air fun. Do you have tips on trading psychology? There is a lot of information to learn about TA and FA, and not so much about trading psychology. I do. Air fun. Unfortunately, it's not the time for that, but. Maybe I'll consider doing, if you really like a session, a one hour session on trading psychology, I would love to do a talk on it. So please put it onto the Facebook. We listen to the comments. Stefan T, you understand? Excellent. Appreciate that, Stefan. I appreciate the feedback. Siong Kok, when Kananga offers a limited number of warrants at bid price, does it mean 500,000 at bid price? Uh, whenever we offer warrants at bid price, right, which is our buy bid promos, which we have on our Telegram, you can see that we offer as much as we're willing to sell at the bid price. Let me just show you an example. So let's say over here, right, 
We offer the bid price promo whenever it is at the bottom of a grey zone or the bottom of a white zone. So especially if the warrant is trading here, the underlying is 234 and the warrant is three and a half, then if say dialog C1E is on our buy bid promo list, then yeah, we will hit as much as we want to. It is the issuer's discretion to hit and when to hit, but let me show you an example of the buy bid promos that we have on Telegram. So that's me. Oh, hello to myself. Example of buy bid promo is here. So every single day at nine, before nine in the morning or at nine, we post these buy bid promos. So let's say Inari C2N is at eight and a half cents. We don't just offer Inari eight and a half cents. We actually offer at eight cents, seven and a half, whichever is the closest to the bottom of the matrix as we explain it over here. We are offering a limited number of these warrants at bid price when the corresponding underlying assets are trading near lower bottom of the Naga matrix. So I hope that answers your question, Tiongko. Liao L can issue US index warrants. Yeah, we can consider it. But like we said, so far we don't see that much demand in the market for these warrants because other issuers have issued them as well and they just gave up on issuing them. Uh, Seong Kok, I love the weekly trading idea. Great job. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Seong Kok. We actually post our trading ideas here. For example, our public bank. Uh, this is exceptionally well done one. We did public bank when it was trading here. We posted it on the 5th of August. You can see the dates. Oops. 5th of August. And you can see it went from 415 all the way to 450. That was our support level. We drew and resistance level at 450, and on 20th of August, that's what it was doing. Uh, please share more ideas on Telegram. Thank you, Edison. Please put that feedback onto our Kananga Facebook, and I'd love to take it um, uh, for consideration as well. We would love to do more than once a week. And we also do trading ideas for Hang Seng. Uh, SW is our warrants, same as US options. Warrants are under the options basket, but US options uh, can be written by anybody. Warrants are written by issuers, so it is textbook the same, but execution totally different. Anyway, I see no more questions. It is 9.48. I just want to say thank you so much to all of you for joining us. Please give us those feedback uh, and learnings on our Facebook. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. If you'd like us to have another beginner, advanced, or maybe intermediate session, please write that on the Facebook as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for spending your Thursday night with me. And I will see you very soon, I hope. We have a few other events coming up. We'll be visiting for Warren's Day. We're visiting Sarawak Kuching on the 19th of next month. And I believe we're visiting Sabah as well for the next month as well. We'll be seeing you at the Bursa market. Uh, we have a Bursa event coming up and the SC event as well coming up. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you. And also, if you want a physical event wherever you are, KL, Penang, so on, message us on the Facebook. We always listen. Thank you and good night, guys. Toodles.